My name is Craig Jackson and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Norwegian Institute for Nature Research, which is one of the partner organizations in the African Bioservices Project. The project is centered around ecosystem services in the Greater Serengeti Marja, Mara region in Tanzania and Kenya. And the local communities in this area are particularly dependent on ecosystem services, but the rapid increase in hu the human population threaten the biodiversity that underpin many of these ecosystem services. So it's consequently important for us to gain a better understanding of how these threats and pressures might influence ecosystem functioning in the future. Large carnivores are particularly vulnerable to many of these threats, and as part of our work in the project, we set out to survey their populations in Serengeti National Park, Ngorogoro Conservation Area, and Loliondo Game Controlled Area. Now, although these three areas border one another, the degree of protection uh, differs greatly, as well as the intensity of changes that have occurred in these areas over the past two decades or so. We replicated a study conducted by Thomas Maddox about 15 years earlier, and this involved the use of call-in stations, uh, where uh, audio recordings of a wildebeest calf in distress and lions and hyenas squabbling over a kill were broadcast over a loudspeaker system. This attracts scavengers over from several kilometers, and uh, we are then able to record the number of individuals as well as the different species which are attracted to the calling stations. These were conducted during the early morning hours, and what was particularly interesting was the fact that in addition to the carnivores, there were also a large number of vultures which came into the calling stations. Now, although vultures' uh, use of olfactory and visual cues is well documented during foraging, there's been basically no uh, focus on the potential use of auditory cues, and the fact that they came in in the absence of any bait or carcasses, and often before any other carnivores, suggests that they were in fact using auditory cues. Now, when we contrasted the mean number of white-backed vultures, lappet-faced vultures, and hooded vultures that responded to the calling stations during the two surveys, so 15 years apart, we found that within the well-protected Serengeti National Park, the numbers were very similar, somewhat mixed results in Gorogoro, but what was particularly apparent was a decline in Loliondo game-controlled area. Now, this was particularly concerning given that during the first survey, the largest number of vultures were in fact recorded in Loliondo. Uh, two of these three species are also listed as uh, critically endangered and the other one is endangered so it gives us an idea of the threats and challenges which they are facing over large parts of their range. But in addition to the conservation challenges, vultures also provide important ecosystem services. Uh, in this case particularly uh, cleaning up in uh, carcasses very rapidly and this reduces the risk of disease transmission which is obviously beneficial for human populations as well as, as, well as livestock and wildlife. And uh, in the case of Loliondo, such ecosystem surface services has now been greatly reduced over the space of just a few years. Uh, vultures also utilize large areas, so the threats that have resulted in their decline in Loliondo may too influence the birds within the Serengeti National Park, and in this way not only compromise the persistence of their population, but also the ecosystem services which they provide to the region.